Okay, well, I'm going to get us started here this morning. Welcome everyone to day three of the ASP 2021 Global Annual Conference on Mastering the Strategy Life Cycle. My name is Denise McNerney and I'm president of the ASP Board of Directors. I don't know about you, but I've really found the conference so far very stimulating, as well as great to meet so many of you through the networking sessions. I've really loved the networking sessions. Uh, quick summary of the last couple of days and the reason I'm doing this, if you haven't got to enjoy much of this, uh, you have access to it for the, through November on the ASP website. So Wednesday, we started with the master classes that were full of great interaction and practical learning. And then our opening reception with Making Box was great. I, we had fun. Who knew you could have so much virtual fun? And I loved it when one of the participants shared how great it was to hang out with a bunch of strategy geeks like him. That was a direct quote. And I don't know about you, but I could really relate to that. It was awesome. Uh, the breakout sessions that we've had have been an interesting mix so far of subject matter from OKRs and KPIs to resilience and risks and transformation, virtual strategy management, agility, leading through change, 360 approach, multiple destination trap, execution in disruptive times. And if you missed yesterday's keynote around uh, the role of ethics and strategy, uh, I say definitely catch the taping of that. Um, it's especially in the times that we're living across the globe right now, ethics and strategy, the intersection there is profound, I think. And we can have a big impact on the planet by thinking about that more as strategists. Uh, of course, you haven't been able to see all these sessions, but as I said, they're all recorded. So keep that in mind, you have access to that. Uh, a couple quick notes on ASP membership. Uh, would like to take the opportunity to welcome all our new members who have taken advantage of the conference registration and the member package too. And those of you who are not yet members, I would encourage you to think about becoming a member. Uh, it can really help with your professional development, your thinking, your learning, and, and sharing some of your knowledge with peers, with all of us strategy geeks. Uh, not only, but there's been a dynamic community, which is great to be part of here. Um, and it's, it brings intellectual input and forms through our webinars and our newsletters, our strategy magazine, our body of knowledge and our certification qualification programs. Uh, relative to the body of knowledge, the BOK, and our certification, as well as membership, there are direct videos on Feedloop around all of that. So make sure you catch those as well. Uh, a quick shout out to the volunteer presenters. All of our presenters have been volunteers and it was a rigorous selection and curation of, of those presenters and moderators and uh, the team, both staff and our great ASP member volunteers have been incredible to pull this conference off and it's just run so smoothly. So shout out to that and shout out to members and future members that are here this morning that uh, we are so grateful for our volunteers and the more engaged you get as a member in a professional organization, uh, the more you get out of it. And it's been an incredible journey for me uh, over these last 10 years uh, and uh, getting very involved in ASP. So uh, I highly encourage that. A quick note on feedback around the conference. You know, as you all know, the importance of continuous improvement and that evaluation cycle. Uh, we're doing the same thing. We're trying to practice what we preach. So please, if you haven't seen the end of the day survey, check your junk mail and please give us feedback. Uh, we want to hear what you think, how we can, every year we want to get this better, and that continuous improvement uh, uh, from great to greater to greater, greater, I don't think there is a great test, it's an infinite continuum. Thinking about next year, uh, please join our closing session this afternoon, it will be quick. There will be a poll to get your views and ideas about next year. We're all living in a lot of uncertainty, as well as the disruption and thinking about whether we go virtual again, whether we go hybrid, 
or whether we go uh, back to our typical uh, on-site program, or like I said, a hybrid of the two, uh, we'll be very interested in hearing what you have to say. We wanna encourage you to network. We've tried to build in a lot of opportunities for networking and take advantage of this on FeedLoop to contact people uh, through the network button on the left-hand navigation of the private chats, all right? And then also the exhibit hall. Um, our exhibitors and sponsors are great. There's a lot of tools that you can learn about and support you can learn about as strategists that uh, you may find incredibly helpful in your practices. So that's the ASP infomercial. Hope you all uh, have your coffee going here or uh, wherever you are in the world, depending, it could be other beverages. So I wanna kick off today, this keynote speaker. This is a delightful welcome. Uh, and Terry Sidford, who will be talking about the courage to lead. Terry's a sought after motivated TEDx speaker. She's an author, a television host and life coach and has been since 1998. She's assisted scores of people and organizations in achieving their dreams. And she believes this is her own life's purpose. Terry's greatest joy has always been to help others unleash their potential and live life to the fullest. Based on her success as a professional coach and thought leader, in her research on the benefits of owning your courage, she's been asked to speak at many personal growth and business-related events. She has spent over half her life acquiring the knowledge and experience that qualify her to guide others. And the acquisition of those experiences is really the basis for one of her two books and the details of which you can find in her speaker profile. So don't forget to put, post your questions in the chat. And uh, we're going to, you have available, and we're going to also download the link to her workbook. It's in the profile. And we're also going to be posting the links to her uh, download on Choose Courage and Six Simple Steps and her book, 100 Hearts. So with that, over to you, Terry. That's what everybody's here for. Thank you, Denise. It's a delight to be here with all of you. What separates the great leaders whose ideas change the world from others whose are just as good, but never see the light of day? What holds them back? Lack of money, support, education, expertise? The leaders whose ideas change the world did not let any of these things hold them back. Why? There is something that separates great leaders that change the world from those that don't. Courage. Great leaders act with great courage. Acting with great courage is what empowers leaders to break through barriers and turn their ideas into realities. It is precisely acting with great courage in the face of great challenge that makes someone become a great leader. The greater the challenges, the greater leadership is required. To be a great leader does not mean you are fearless. It means you act fearlessly. Right now, every one of you are facing unprecedented challenges that require you to act with more courage than ever before and be a leader. And I'm here with you to help you do just that. Today, I will share my story and the four steps that I discovered in my own life that everyone can take to supercharge their courage and inspire everyone around them to act with courage too. As a professional speaker, coach, author, podcaster, and television host, I have seen these powerful steps help individuals, organizations, and leaders to be courageous, take bold actions, and achieve their most ambitious goals. And my mission to inspire great courage is what brought me here with you. 
Today, you're going to hear the story of how I discovered these four steps. And you'll be able to craft an action plan that you will be able to implement immediately so that you can act with great courage and transform your life, your work, and your world. Sound good? Let's get started with step one and my story. 1970, Encinitas, California. I'm eight years old. One evening, my 13-year-old sister, Debbie, rushes into the bedroom and says, Terry, pack your things. We have to leave right now. Where are we going? Dad's house. Dad's house, why? Mom and her boyfriend have been drinking all day and they're drunk. It's just too dangerous for us here. We have to go. But dad doesn't know we're coming. I know, Terry. I know, I know. But we have to leave before mom gets home. Okay, okay. But what am I going to carry? What am I going to take? Here, take this pillowcase, whatever you can put in, and whatever you can carry. Let's go. Okay, okay. Oh, but Debbie, what about my goldfish? Who's going to take care of them? Can we take them? No, Terry, we can't take them. We have to go, but they're gonna be fine. Let's go. We walked 30 minutes to my dad's house and we never returned. Most of my life, when I look back, I just see two little girls running away. What I did not see until years later was that Debbie and I did something that required a lot of courage. At the age of eight and 13, we took life into our own hands. Looking back at our lives and identifying how much courage we've demonstrated was actually the starting point for increasing it. If you take a look, I am certain that you have had a moment like this in your own life. So I'd like you to acknowledge how much courage you have now. To know when you've been courageous, look at the times you struggle to overcome a challenge, when you were beset by fear, when you suffered profoundly, when you acted despite the opposition of people around you, where you overcame an obstacle that seemed insurmountable where you achieved something beyond anything you'd imagined, where you turned what seemed like an absurd dream into a reality, where you told a truth despite the cost. All of us have been courageous and seeing it enhances our ability to act even more courageous in the future. Now, please take a look at the level of courage that you've demonstrated from your childhood to the present moment in both your personal and your professional lives. I want everyone right now to just stop and I want you to reflect on the last time that you were courageous and how much have you acted with courage. Give yourself a rating on a scale from one to ten on an average. One, you have not taken the bold actions required to do your best work and live the life you've dreamed of. 10, you always act with great courage and leverage every opportunity to contribute your all and fully maximize your potential. You can build your courage. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. It requires facing doubts, and fears that get in the way and persisting until you achieve your goals. What number did you give yourself today? If you did not give yourself a 10, I'd like you to visualize what important goal you would achieve and what you would do differently. If you were at a level 10 encouraged today, It's very important to put a target date on your goal. For example, 
if you want to learn to speak Portuguese, by the time you're up for that next promotion to be considered for the new management position in Brazil, it might be important or essential to put a target date on it and to take action steps to achieve your goal or it won't happen. So take a moment now and think about your important goal and how and when you will achieve it. I'll give you a few moments. Great. Now, get ready to see big things happen because turning dreams into reality is what you're going to be empowered to achieve today. Back to my story. I had been living with my dad now for six years and Debbie left for college. Dad started to grow his hair out long and wear puka shells and enjoy the 70s lifestyle in Southern California. By the time I'm 14, dad says, we're gonna go on a family vacation to some hot springs. So he and his girlfriend and I pile in his old yellow Toyota pickup with that big white camper on it. And we head to the mountains in Northern California. 12 hours later, dad says, we're here. I'm so excited. I'm still in the back of the camper and I open up the drapes and it's beautiful. I could see tall, tall pine trees. I could smell the pine needles and the fresh air. And I could see some steam coming out of this large pool. And as I look a little closer, what do I see? Naked people, older naked people everywhere. Dad had told me he had gone to a few nudist colonies before, but he sure didn't take me and didn't tell me that's where we're going on our family vacation. When I realized where we were, I said, Dad, how dare you? I can't believe you took me here. You expect me to be here all week? I am not taking my clothes off. Take me home now. Come on, Terry, this place isn't so bad. It's not such a big deal. These people are nice. Dad, it just doesn't feel right hanging out with a bunch of naked adults. If you don't take me home right now, I'm gonna stay in this camper the entire time. You can't do that, Terry. Oh yes, I can. I am not leaving this camper. The camper was big enough to sleep in and it had a bathroom, so I refused to go. And he and his girlfriend left. It was right then that I found my courage once again. Our integrity is really put to the test. When we find ourselves in a situation where we're pushed to make a decision that violates our values, especially by someone we respect or admire. When you say no, when someone has asked you to make a compromise, you may risk losing that person's esteem, affection, and maybe even your position at work. The problem is when you compromise your values, you lose your self-respect. Whereas when you say no, that refusal enhances your self-respect and your chances for success. Now, back to my story. Later that day, I'm still in the camper and I hear a knock on the door and I think it's my dad. And I open it and it's a boy my age and he's cute and he has clothes on. Who are you? I'm Michael. Your dad told me to come and get you out of the camper and tell you this place isn't so bad. I don't care. I am not getting out of this camper. He tells me he had been there for a couple of weeks and he was okay with the nudism. He had dealt with it for a long time because of his home parents, but he never took his clothes off. We ended up becoming friends, having fun and spending the rest of the week together with our clothes on. As a result of standing my ground and saying no and staying true to myself, I took a risk that I might not be accepted, but instead, 
I earned respect. I found my voice and I gained confidence in myself. And I even ended up making a new friend. But what happens when the stakes are high? I've seen time and time again, when leaders act with courage and stay true to their values, they earn the respect and admiration that enables them to lead their teams to embrace greater responsibilities and opportunities. Don't we all prefer to work, live, or do business with people who have clear values that we can trust and count on to act with courage, right? You can be that person. The first step is simply saying no when someone has asked you to violate your values. Each time you say no, you will earn the respect from others and you, it will build your courage. Of course, you do want to say no with tact. And the simplest way to do that is to explain that the request made of you violates a specific value you hold. Always be honest and clear and position your response in a positive. For example, it feels uncomfortable to handle the situation with Mike that way. How can we approach it differently so that my communication is received clearly and positively? Honor your values time after time, and you will act with greater and greater courage. You will set an example and earn the trust from people around you. You will be a leader. Leaders are people who stand up for what they believe and courageously lead by example. Roy Disney once said, when you are clear on your values, making decisions becomes easier. You become a leader as a result of the decisions you make and the actions you take. And when the time comes for you to ask your team to do something that requires sacrifice or risk, they will act with courage too. To act with great courage, take action step number one. When never violate your values, just say no. Let me give you an example. One of the ladies who filled out my courage survey in my, for my book, 100 Hearts, described how she never stood up for herself growing up. She bravely defended a colleague who was misunderstood in a meeting and teased due to her accent. She stood up for her cultural difference in a workplace in front of many of her colleagues that she respected and admired. It was a vulnerable and courageous act. It takes courage to stand up for something that's important to us. So I want you to take a moment now <clears throat> to think of a time when someone asked you to violate your values and you said no, and how that impacted your reputation, your team, and success. I'm gonna give you a few moments to think about that. The more prepared you are to say no to things that, you, that go against your values, the easier it will be to actually say no. It takes practice and preparation to say no with tact and to keep the conversation open for discussion. Think of a situation where you will say no going forward and why. I'll give you a few moments to think about it. If you're one of those people that has a hard time saying no, and I know you're out there, you might wanna try thinking of it this way. Remember, on the other side of no is a yes to something else. What are you saying yes to instead? Now, back to my story. 
Salt Lake City, Utah, 1995. I need a job. I apply for a pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical position and a company calls me back for an interview. I am so excited, but I have a problem. The problem is for every pharmaceutical rep position, it requires a four-year college degree. I do not have a four-year college degree. When I went to college, I was living on my own and working full-time. I struggled in my classes due to my low self-esteem. I needed more time to study than the average student. It was just too much. I couldn't work full time and go to school. So after two years of juggling both, I quit college. I go in the interview anyway, and the conversation's going great. We were talking for almost three hours until the interviewer says, Terry, I have one last question for you. Uh, it's about your degree. I see that you went to college for two years, but I don't see that you graduated. Now, um, what is your degree? Um, I did not finish my degree. I see, Terry. Well, it's required that our company, that you have a four-year degree. I don't care if it's in basket weaving. Any degree will do. There was a long pause. I could see his disappointment. Terry, you've come so highly recommended. I'm gonna go up the line and see if there's anything we can do to make an exception. Over five years, I went from being a medical assistant to managing an entire ophthalmology practice of eight physicians. I knew the products, I knew ophthalmology, and I didn't see any reason why I would not do well. Two days go by and I don't hear from them. And then on the day before Christmas, the phone rings. It's the interviewer. Terry, uh, what are you doing January 5th? I don't know. I don't have any plans. Terry, our company has never made an exception like this before, but we're going to take a chance on you and you've got the job. How would you like to come to our national sales meeting in Hawaii? What do you think I said? Yes. I recognize my genuine qualifications and so did they. What would have happened had I disqualified myself and not gone on the interview? Nothing, right? Even if you don't think you meet the necessary qualifications and there's a slight chance of success, say yes and take it. It might just be the break that you and your team need. Because if you don't say yes, it's 100% certain you will not succeed, right? Leaders, create a vision for change and inspire others to take a chance, break new ground and go beyond what they believed was possible. Leaders never disqualify themselves or anyone else. And when the opportunity appears, they know they need to go for it. As to my story, after I got the job as the pharmaceutical rep, I stopped being ashamed that I didn't finish college. In fact, I felt proud to be the exception and I felt truly exceptional and powerful. Be that person that sets an example and takes a risk and encourages action even if the odds are against you. And you will boost the courage and that of your team and together you will achieve goals that you never thought possible. To act with great courage, take action step number two, never disqualify yourself. Instead, say yes. What have you and your team successfully achieved in the past because you did not disqualify yourself? Take a moment now to think about a time in your life with your team or in your personal life where you did not disqualify yourself and achieved your goals. Or think of a time that you did disqualify yourself too early and didn't give yourself a chance at success. I'll give you a moment to think about it.
Now, think about what you and your team can do to achieve now by not disqualifying yourselves and saying yes instead. Take a moment and think about it. You never know what you, are, what you can achieve until you try. Start saying yes first and then figure out how to get there. Now back to my story and step number three. 2012, Park City, Utah, Starbucks, early morning. I'm having coffee with my friend Colleen and I'm telling her, you know, Colleen, I have coached hundreds and hundreds of coaching clients over the past 15 years. There's something I've noticed that doesn't make sense, especially in women. What's that, Terry? I've seen again and again how they have demonstrated truly inspiring courage and rarely see it in themselves. Terry, that is fascinating. Why don't you write a book about that? Colleen, I can't write a book. I, I don't even know how to write. Terry, I'll help you. And she did. And I wrote that book. And it took a couple years. And let me tell you, it took a lot of courage. But it was worth it. My readers told me that when they read my book, they started to see their own courage many for the very first time. They started to take more risk and achieve their goals and inspire the people in their lives to go for their dreams too. The book took off and I started to speak to groups all over the country. During one of my book tours, a lady in the audience asked me to describe how I had demonstrated courage. I stood there not knowing what to say, my own courage. My head was spinning, my heart was pounding. I give a really inadequate answer. I find courage in my day-to-day -day life? Really, Terry, really? That's all you could come up with? I ran off stage completely embarrassed. I could not identify my own courage. I did not see that I had shown courage in my own life stories. I was always ashamed of my past. I saw everything I had done as expedient survival strategies, nothing to be proud of. I was just like the women in the survey. I never in my wildest dreams thought that I'd ever demonstrated any courage in my own life, even though I wrote a book about it. <laughs> I thought to myself, well, what if I could really own the fact that I'm courageous? When I finally embraced the idea that I am courageous, I stopped hiding and making excuses about my past. It was changing my story from one of being ashamed to one of seeing myself as courageous that allowed me to get out into the world and I showed up more powerfully in my life, work, and I started to achieve things I truly never dreamed possible. Changing my story changed my life. Let me say that in a different way. Changing the story I tell others changed my life. Why? because I began to see myself differently and that changed how I acted and how people perceived me. I used to use the story of my absent mother to justify that I didn't know how to do my hair or makeup because my mother wasn't there to teach me. I didn't see myself capable of learning this on my own, but of course I was capable. Later on in life, when I changed that story, I realized that I had a beautiful, loving mother, although she had an addiction. Changing my perspective and my personal beliefs of that story 
help me not use my old story as an excuse to not look, feel, and be my best. Share your stories of how you acted with courage to overcome hardships, challenges, and adversities, and you will build your confidence and inspire others. These are what I call superhero stories. Your team needs to know it's okay to make a mistake. And what looks like a failure may actually be a stepping stone on your way to success instead. Now, here's the cool thing. You get to assign the meaning of your superhero stories. For example, early in my story, I told you about not gradu graduating from college because I struggled in my classes. It was just too much at the time. And I felt like a failure, but it turned out to be one of my many defining moments in my own life. It gave me the ability to go beyond what I thought I was qualified to do and ended up getting my dream job as a pharmaceutical rep. I changed my story from failure to achieving my dream. I now see every challenge as a possible opportunity and have inspired many people to go for their dreams too. And you will inspire others by changing the meaning of your stories and trials and tribulations into stories of triumph and success. Keep sharing your superhero stories and you will start to see yourself as that courageous person that you are. You will be more motivated to take daring actions and be an inspiration to your team and everyone around you. Now here's the secret to telling a great superhero story. Don't hold back all the juicy details, the more challenging and even embarrassing, the better and more empowering the story. Turn your story from failure to success. That is what your life will start looking like. Great leaders are great storytellers. They give meaning to what happens to us and we start to see ourselves capable of greatness. The stories we hear and the stories we tell ourselves define how we act and show up in the world. There's nothing more powerful than a superhero story to affect change. To act with great courage, take action step number three, share your superhero stories. Think of a superhero story in which you overcame a challenge or realized an ambitious dream through an act of courage. You might be saying to yourself, I don't have a superhero story. You might surprise yourself. Think of a time that you overcame an obstacle or you beat the odds and you came out ahead and you learned something from the experience. These stories of triumph inspire others to not give up and they will start to create their own superhero stories. I never thought that my own stories of challenges and adversities would turn into my own superhero stories and start to inspire many people. So take a few moments now and think of your own superhero story. Now, I want you to visualize how and when you will share that superhero story. Maybe you're talking with your team or one-on-one -on -one with a friend. I want you to visualize their face light up with amazement, respect, and curiosity. Now, back to my story, 1992, October, Salt Lake City, Utah, late morning. I decide to make a call that's long overdue. 
for the past 30 years, I felt hurt and sad that my mother wasn't there for me when I needed her. She missed my birthday parties and wasn't at holiday celebrations. She never taught me the things I imagine mothers shared with their daughters. Then one day I was talking to my friend Janet about how my mother was not there for me. And Janet said, it sounds like your mother was doing the best she could. I bet she was hurting more than you were at the time. Battling her addiction and giving up her children must have been extremely hard. I know she's 100% right. For the first time, I felt deep love, compassion, and forgiveness for my mother. A few hours later, I dial my mother's number and mom picks up the phone. Hello, Terry, mom, there's something I'd like to tell you. Mom, you're one of the most courageous people I know. I just want you to know your example has inspired me to stay strong when I wanted to give up. Mom, I remember seeing how you overcame your alcohol addiction and you went back to school to become a registered nurse so you could provide for and take care of your sick husband and young son. Mom, are you there? After a long pause, I could hear her voice crack with emotion. Thank you, Terry. I really appreciate you telling me that. It means so much to me. And I know it does. When you change your story about other people from a story that focuses on their failings to a story that honors their courage, you will see them taking bigger, bolder, and more successful actions. We all know that what we focus on persists. So put your focus on the courage and grit that you and others have found to overcome obstacles and achieve success. Make sure every member of your team is honored by acknowledging the courage they have demonstrated and you will have a team that will be unstoppable. I would like to challenge you all before the day is done to pick up the phone or go online and honor someone for their courage. You might also create a system at your workplace to acknowledge action taken by an individual or a team that required courage. Did someone earn a certification or a degree and make that difficult call to a customer or a vendor? Did they take that continued education class? There are things we can do that only take a few moments that have the power to change a life and in turn make our world a much better place. And it is time to lead by acknowledging yourself, your team for being courageous. The more you are honor your courage in others, the more you will see it in yourself. And it will inspire everyone around you to be more courageous too. Let me ask you, is there any reason to wait? To act with great courage, take action step number four, honor the courage of others. Think about someone who acknowledged your courage, strength, or persistence, and how that made you feel, and how it impacted you. Maybe it was someone you work with, or maybe it was a family member. Take a moment now and remember that moment and how it made you feel. Now, I want you to think of three people that you will contact and honor. 
their courage. Take a few moments and picture these people now. I want you to think about how these people will be impacted by your acknowledgement. I want you to picture them smiling with appreciation. You will have instantly earned their trust and their respect. Every one of you has the courage to be a leader, take risks and overcome obstacles and achieve great things. Let's review the four steps that will enable you to act with great courage. When asked to violate your values, just say no. Never disqualify yourself, instead say yes. Share your superheroes and honor the courage of others. Take these steps and you will inspire change. Move people to action. Set an example. Unite people, impact the world, reveal truths, solve problems, improve lives, and change perceptions, break records, and empower others to be their best. Take these four steps consistently, and you will see your goals become realities. You will be the leaders that create the life work and world that we've all been dreaming of. You will become a great leader by having the courage to lead. Thank you. Terry, thank you so much. That thank was you. great. Really, really appreciate it. And Nicole, thanks for putting the uh, additional links here. Um, the, I think people, you really got people thinking here. Um, and I appreciate, we pulled together some questions for you. Great. So um, I'm, I'm gonna just hit a few of these uh, since we've got a few more minutes and uh, we'll keep going. My wheels are still turning. Oh, good, good. <laughs> so, uh, all right, well, the first question, and I'm going to be brave and have these in first person. Uh, the first is, I've often let fear keep me from doing what I know I should do. What do I do to make a change? I love this question. It takes courage and commitment to make a change. The first step is just facing your fear. I know that seems daunting, but face it and then keep going. The four steps are four commitments that will enable you to act courageously. You have to commit to them and then keep going. And you will start to make better decisions in the direction of what you really want. Great, thanks. Um, words of wisdom. <laughs> so, so the second, where I work saying no isn't an option. What should I do when an issue comes up? And no should be the answer. <laughs> yes. Uh, will you repeat that one one more time? Sure yeah. I got it correctly. Where I work, saying no isn't an option. What should I do when an issue comes up? This is really a great question because it's real life. It's what we all have experienced, I think, sometime in, in our life if we've been in the workplace. And how I look at this is that it, it, you need to be able to say no, but of course you want to make sure that you open the conversation and it's not a black or white situation. You want to have a collaborative conversation and that takes practice. When you are saying no to something that's really important to you, it often comes out a little bit um, intense. <laughs> I don't know if any of you can relate to that. So practice it, saying it with tact and leaving the door open for conversation. You should be able to stand up for your values at the workplace and try to get them to understand what you're saying no to and what your values are. Excellent, excellent, thank you. Mm -hmm. What about, how do I know if my fear is justified and I'm really not ready or qualified to do something? 
Another great question. Thank you. I think that you really have to pay attention to your emotions. If you are very excited about doing something, then it might possibly be something for you. You might have to learn more, more about it and you might need real dedication to make it happen. But let's say that you want to dance for the New York, New York ballet and you're, you're dreading it and, and you just can't even imagine you doing it, then that's probably more of an emotion that that's probably not for you. So get in tune with your emotions about it and be willing to work hard to get it. But if you get excited, that's probably is something for you. Great. There, there's a question in the chat box. Um, how do you deal with having negative people around you or in leadership positions? Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, really? Does that happen? <laughs> oh, no, never. Yes. This is something, it's a life skill. It's a life skill that we all have to deal with, not even in the workplace, but everywhere. It's important to understand what, what's happening, especially if they're a, a, in management over you or something like that. And it's really getting, getting clear and preparing yourself on how to handle that person. And a lot of times you might be surprised by this but I've used kind of like good, you know, good word, words and, and just kind of light conversation around somebody that's negative, not too excited, but not to don't buy into their negativity either. Um, and then stand up for yourself. But again, it's your tone and being prepared on how to handle it. And sometimes it just needs space, but always be honest with yourself and with that person. And if it continues, then you need to kind of confront that. Yeah, great. Which is another whole keynote address, right? It is. <laughs> yeah, next time. Right. How about um, sometimes I feel a need to share stories where I am not the hero. What mm. should I do? Oh, I felt the same way about my story. So I can relate to this. I did everything I could possibly do to hide my stories because I was ashamed of them growing up. And true story that wasn't until I did my TEDx talk and I was encouraged to tell every story I never wanted to tell. And I did on that stage. And it was the most liberating experience of my entire life. And I had so many people come up to me afterwards and tell me how inspired they were. And that for the first time, they don't feel alone. So I turned my stories of feeling shame, of shame about them into superhero stories. So if you can think of it that way, that some of these stories, it's okay it's to be vulnerable and real with people because it sets them free to do the same and they feel like they can relate to you and then they can feel like they're not alone. Does that help you? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Me and everyone else that helped pull these questions together. <laughs> I think we all feel stronger and, and more courageous now. Um, what about the last question we have here is sometimes I'm paralyzed by fear. What do you advise to people who feel paralyzed by fear? Mm. That can be subtle too. It, subtle? Mm -hmm. Yes, it can be subtle. It can be dramatic and it can be very subtle. I get this question all the time as a coach and as a speaker. And here's the answer to this. There's no right or wrong, but the most important thing to understand is that you need to face that fear. Face it, look it in the eye and then keep going. 98% of what we fear never happens. And a lot of the fear is from the past and that we're trying to protect ourselves from something, whether it's something that happened in the past or real danger. So identify, first of all, is it real danger or not? And if it's not, then look it in the eye and say, is this really real now? Maybe, you know, I was bit by a dog before, but maybe this is a nice little puppy in front of me. Um, so is it now or is that from the past? So you really have to identify that and then keep going. Great. This has really been a breath of fresh air. Um, it's it, in strategy development, culture is huge. And, and we typically talk about culture 
as the whole gestalt in an organization, right? Mm -hmm. And what, what's really important here is that gestalt comes from the collective of all the individuals within the organization, right? And that culture is the same. And so where we, we talk a lot when we're doing culture work about um, driving fear out of the organization. And, and we know in organizational development, we can't drive 100% of fear out of the organization because all of us have some fear and some of that fear is healthy, right? Yes. Um, and it's still, this has just been really helpful and really great um, because I believe that it gets our wheels turning as strategists to think about what can we do as we help organizations advance their culture? Um, what things can we do for individual situations and all the collective individuals within the organization to, to help build a healthier culture? I so, love that, um, that and, and here's another thought about this. You know, sometimes we can also change the, the meaning of fear in a culture like that is that what if you look at it also as a, as a gift? I know, a gift, what? But you're going out of your comfort zone and that's where you, you learn new things and new skills that you didn't think you were capable of. That's right. So in a culture, in a team, you know, maybe say, okay, but don't let it paralyze you. Uh, keep going. And, and maybe there's a new opportunity of something you have never tried before. So that's another way to look at it too. Excellent. There is a great comment in the chat box too. I'll, I'll share it. Uh, you may have a comment on the comment. I recently heard that taking courageous actions disrupts your life. But the question is, how will I disrupt my life to stand for the things that are important to me? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, that one made me a little bit emotional because in the end, the things you will regret are the things that you didn't stand up for that are important to you in your life. And that's the bigger picture. It's what are you going to regret? in the end, that you didn't do the things that you wanted to do. You didn't stand up for the things that were important to you. So, so that's a great comment. And it, it does sometimes cause disruption, but sometimes that disruption's okay and it'll all be fine. Excellent. What a great way to close this out. Thank you so much, Terry. I want to remind everyone that there's downloadable links in the profile. If you scroll down on the feed loop page below this, it's also in the chat box here. And I uh, encourage you all to download Terry's workbook where you can work through some of these questions, could be great for group discussions with your teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's also provided the download to choose courage in six simple steps and her book, 100 Hearts. Terry Sidford, thank you so much for your time today and your words of wisdom. Really, really thank appreciate you. you. Thank you. It being here. Great. Thanks to all for coming and keep the conference going. Have fun today, folks. Lots to learn. Take care. <laughs>